Good morning, Denny. Or good afternoon. It's good afternoon. Oh, buddy. Hey, what's up? How are you? I'm doing awesome. How are things up there in Tennessee, Ryan? Oh, they're doing good. I invited some of my team members. Uh, I think only a couple of them might show up this time, but in the near future, you may have 20 people jump on your jump on your Thursday thing just for the fun uh, of it. Yeah, happy to have them. How's Florida? Uh, good. Uh, we have that unseasonably warm temperatures, which the tourists love. The, sure, the beaches are crowded. Not that we ever get to go there. So, Florida's good. The market's good. And um, <clears throat> never see anything like it, really. Why does everybody have the same name? Because they're all using that person's sign in. It's the only link that shows in the calendar, I think. Can you, you guys know how to go in and change your name? Mm -hmm. I did. You oh, I didn't know mine did it too. Let me go like this. It must be the link you have on Facebook. Oh my gosh. It's the link in the calendar as well. There we go. Thank you. Kristen says you guys have been having some pretty good conversations, Ryan. Yeah, Kristen's pretty awesome. We've been talking yeah. about a lot of good things. She's growing. She's growing on me. I figured it happened eventually, Denny. <laughs> I'm sure. I mean, I'm, my grandmother used to make me eat beets. I'm sure if I eat beets enough, I'd probably start to like them. I don't think so. Those are disgusting. I like beets. Beets are good. Pickled beets are the best on a salad. I've had some beets that are, there's different kinds. I mean, the ones my grandmother had were in a can and like they're red and maybe that's what you mean by pickled. I don't, I don't dislike them as much now as I used to. And then I had a salad in Europe or something where a good chef, there was different types of beets and he really made it amazing, really. Yeah. So anyway, did I have, you think I've ever bought them though? No, that's probably true. I've never bought them. I tried them for health reasons for running and they tasted like dirt. They, they do have an earthy taste to them. I grew them in my backyard. We had a wonderful vegetable garden and I learned the, the scary way that if you eat too many beets, you pee the color of beets. And I thought I was like dying or something. And, uh, Found out it was just because I ate a whole bunch of beets the day before. It only happens to like 20% of people, but I guess I'm in that 20%. If I eat too much beets, the color just goes right through me. Well, Scared the heck out of me. Scared the heck out of me. You know what Gary says? You want to be the top 20%. John Boy, how you doing, man? Doing good. Dan, how you doing today? John is going to be, uh, Sonny has got a, something going on. John is really going to be the main host today. Uh, and I, I only have a request that came in. Uh, I was asked to, to uh, be on um, a um, uh, pivot shift thing with James Shaw for a few minutes. So in about 30 minutes, I'll pop off and then I'll pop back on just for, for the end of the call. So I'll let John be the big boss today, man. You get a raise and pay today. <clears throat> Now we still have a few people logging in. Now at this point, Denny is uh, who is admitting people? Well, I'll tell you what. I'm going to make you host. All right. So you'll have control over that. 
And one thing we'll have to look at is the, some of the links are clicking on basically everyone that comes up with share of uh, Bar Baraquino or whatever. And so I don't know why that is the case. So if your name isn't right up there, if you'd be kind enough to change your name, that's probably on us. We'll be starting here. I got one o'clock, John. So I don't Perfect. I get started. All right. So Denny, did you say that you had some requests come in? Yes. Uh, uh, let's see. Is, is Sheffra on? Is Sheffra on yet? She, Sheffra, are you there? I do not see him. Nope. Awesome. Well, she had a uh, interesting situation happen. I'll find somebody that maybe wants to do this. Um, she ran a couple of things by me today quickly, and, and I said, well, that, that, those are great things to talk on the call about. All right, so this is something I've never heard of. Obviously, we're working hard for listings. So welcome, everyone that's never been here. Danny Grimes here, John McCobb, my co-host. And this is basically mastery level role play. And we love to use question-based um, listening enhanced conversational scripts. So we'll have some things we'll cover. You can type in uh, something from the chat if you want. And if you even want to put in there, because we've got new faces, you want to put in where you're from, that'd be awesome. And we'll have to know a little bit about you. So anyway, I get a call from an agent. She's been on our calls quite a bit. And she said, I've got a seller. Just when I thought I had the listing earned, the seller said this, I tell you what, I am not going to give you the listing unless you earn the listing. And, and, and I'm making this offer to other real estate agents. I will list with the agent that brings me a, a house to buy that I want to buy. And if I like the, I mean, I like the house enough and I'm going to move forward, I will reward you with my listing. Now, when, when the seller says that to you, does anyone want to start asking some questions to get into curiosity to, and, and then basically handle this situation? It's a little bit different. However, everything is, has some similarities. Any, do we have any takers, John, that would like to do that? I'll be yeah, the I don't, seller. That's a, that is a great objection, Denny. I, I love this one. So I'm looking to see who is really looking to be bold today and jump on this. Al's already smiling with that. Please don't call on me. Look. <laughs> so has anyone. Take it, Jeff. <laughs> you're you going to take a shot at it, Al? Awesome. Has anyone encountered that? A seller says, I'm going to list with the person who finds me the house to buy. Jennifer, you've had that before? Well, I'm, I'm the one that called Denny. <laughs> yeah, Jennifer's awesome. the one. Yeah, so it was I cool. My, my Wednesday listing appointment was, this was his um, objection. So we'll, we'll, we, we talked a little bit, and so I'll let her hear somebody else in here. But the first time she heard it too. So, Brian, are you not, are you not feeling froggy today? No. Ryan, you're not, Ryan, you're, you go. I am, there. I have. I'm just, I'll, I'll jump in there. I'll jump in there. All right, Ryan. So again, uh, we, we attempt to follow the model here. Ryan's a heavyweight in real estate. He may do things differently. It's question-based. You know, we uh, uh, isolate, um, I'm sorry, acknowledge, isolate, answer, and close. So we're having the conversation. I say that after you pick yourself up from the floor, what do you say? What do you, how would you handle it? All right, Al, you, you're going you're gonna, to oh, you take I'm the Ryan. first run out or do you want Ryan to? I think Ryan's doing. All right, Ryan. Okay, let's do this. So, Danny, um, tell me about the home that you're looking for. Tell me about that house. It's going to be this, 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 this. And it's not out there. They don't come on the market very often, and that's what I want. That, 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 that sounds like a pretty uh, amazing home. It sounds like something special. Is that, is that right? Yeah, it's got floor, it, got, it has floor, floors, doors, and windows. It's awesome. You know, Diddy, you ever wonder why the special homes, um, they never come on the market active. They always come on the market immediately pending. You ever see that? Yes. However, that's why I'm sicking you real estate agents to go find me something that may be off market. Because not only am I going to buy that house from you, I am going to reward you with my awesome home to list. Well, let me tell you what happens, Denny, and, and why you should work with me. Um, you, what you are looking for is something special. Um, and, and I'll tell you why it always comes off the market before it even goes on the market. Um, it's because, it, you know, teams that are active in the market, we, we, we see the special ones before they even hit. And we have a whole list of... of, of uh, people that we're working with that we show them to and we sell them before they even hit the market. 
Um, would you be interested in, in, uh, in finding that special home before it even hits the market? And you're singing my song, Ryan. That's exactly why I'm having like five of you do that because I know you have your feelers out there. I know you have your favorites and I know that we don't share in DNA. However, I'm going to tempt you with my listing. So go, go get them, baby. Well, I tell you what, in order to work with me, I, I need you to sign this buyer broker <laughs> agreement. <laughs> um, no, seriously though, but it, it, Danny, if you want to find that special home and we're going to have a relationship together, we're going to work together. I, I'd love to sell your house, but those special houses, the reason why they're coming off the market so fast before they even hit is because the buyers are ready and willing to go and the sellers see that. Um, if you were selling your home and you had you had a person that their house is already under contract or, or sold or, or, or on the market, give us an offer. And you have somebody that hasn't even put their house on the market yet. Which which offer would you pick, Denny? Yeah, but you're controlling the situation. You you know the seller of this other house. Hey, this is what I would do. Hey, you want to you want to sell your house? I've got a buyer for your house. Denny, but let's be honest. Which which offer would you pick? Well, this buyer, this seller is not going to have any other choices because you're going to bring them right to me. It's not on the market. This is an off market, behind the behind the market situation. So, you want to you want to go be one of the five real estate agents that want to work with me? I would love to work with you, but I, I will tell you that in this market and how hot it is, uh, that seller has even even if I, I find an off the market uh, a listing, I guarantee you they have multiple options. What if their option was to sell it to me because I'm the best offer? Okay. So if you're, what you're saying is if I bring you the perfect home and you decide to buy it, then you'll list with me. Yes. If you can bring me the home I'm going to buy and we can strike up a deal. Now, again, I can't, I mean, it's going to sell fast. So the guy's going to have to, you know, give me a, you know, a um, subject to, I mean, I can't buy the house without selling, although you didn't ask me that. Um, yeah. So I'll, I'll buy it. You'll get the commission on that one. And the commission on my house that I'm listing, that I'll list with you. I tell you what, let me take all the risk, Denny. How about we list your home on your terms? You can cancel with me at any time. And if I don't find you that perfect house within a week, then you can you can use somebody else. Because I already think I have a couple lined up. I'll give you three days. I'll take it. Let's go. Okay. I will stop. This is kind of a weird situation. So, John, you can uh, slice and dice and dissect that. So, Ryan, thanks right. for so Ryan, volunteering. You, you got a three-day listing. So, what, what did you do well in the conversation? Uh, you know what? People are going to throw obstacles in your way. There's no reason to let them stop you. Most people wouldn't even negotiate that. But, but, but now I have a three-day listing for at least three days. I've pushed all the other buyers or all the other agents out of the way. Mm -hmm. So I'll take that. Let's do, okay. let's go because in that three days, I'm going to prove that he's going to stick with me. <clears throat> okay. So I, I just don't let, I just don't let obstacles stop me. And, and I love that. I absolutely love that. So what happens if Denny goes out and he sees a house on Facebook marketplace, it's perfect. And he goes and strikes up a deal without you. Where do you stand? I still have a three-day listing. Okay, so he does it on, on day three, and then he cancels you. So he, here's a thought. Now, I don't know. Denny's frozen. I don't know if he can hear or not. The question would the question that I – first question I wrote down is, you know, if it didn't matter about who brought you the house, let's say you already had the house, who would you hire? That's a good question. Would that be helpful to know? Yeah. If you finding a new house, now Denny's back. Now, Denny, if you finding a new house was not part of the equation, who would you hire? Yeah, that is a good question. And I would probably, uh, yeah, I think that's fair enough. The, the other thing is, is my style, I like to, to politely try and move people out of the way. What happens if the person that finds that quote-unquote perfect house, using your words, Ryan, not ours, 
uh, finds that perfect house has been in the business for three days. Have you ever heard the, have you ever heard the phrase, even a blind squirrel gets a nut? So just because the person that brought the house does not mean it's the right person to sell their home. So how can you disarm Denny in that, in that regard? I have an approach. Gio, you got something? Yeah. So when he was saying, I will um, pick you as my buyer agent, if, as my seller agent, if you bring the, um, the house I want. So he's, um, he's saying, he's proposing that you go out and look for this home and only bring it to him. Would that be something that he, that, he would like to happen to him as a seller. Would he trust somebody that is hijacking a listing and is bringing it to only one person instead of a whole VIP client that may offer the highest amount possible for their home? Man, I love that question. That turns that right around on him. Are you going to get the most for your house if only one buyer sees it? You got an echo, John. Uh, yeah, Gio, can you, thank you. Uh, Gio and I are in the same room. So, Got it. Uh, so yeah. So what does that look like, Denny? You, you go back into the seller mode. So, you know, Denny, I, I, I appreciate you wanting that off market deal. When we list your home, are you looking for only one buyer or do you want everyone to see it so you can get the highest price possible? Fair enough. And we don't have to take the time on this role play to go into the conversation of why that may or may not be good for the seller. I'm, I'm kind of curious how that potential seller even heard of that. It is kind of an interesting approach. And I just to kind of close this conversation on that point, we all have sellers that would that we sell off market before they're exposed. So does anyone want to demonstrate the conversation you have? <clears throat> because we're all good agents. We should give the sellers the choice, just like a doctor says, hey, look, <clears throat> do you want to take medicine, which may, may not work and may get worse? Or do you want to go ahead and have the, have the surgery? You don't really need that thumb anyway. Um, you know, we, the doctors kind of let us make the decision. So who has an awesome conversation to let the seller know, hey, look, I have a buyer now. And they're willing to do this, or we could expose it to the market. Who can who can demonstrate the conversation you use that's basically very effective? Anybody? I mean, Al? I kind of get into oh, Shannon, the pros. Go for it. Yeah. So I'll I'll bring the pros and cons of both situations to light. You know, the, the pros of of working with the one and only buyer is Are you don't talking, have to you're talking to me as a seller so this, oh, this I'm is sorry. Role play. okay so denny there's pros and cons to both situations may i explain that to you you may all right great so if you work with just one buyer and off you know your home's off market and we bring the one buyer through and they want to offer you money um the advantage of that to you is you don't have to deal with multiple strangers through your home. In this market, you know, the homes are hitting the house and, and my sellers are having to leave the home at nine o'clock in the morning and sometimes not returning until 10 o'clock at night and they're exhausted. Um, they've had strangers in their home all day for a day or two. Um, so you get to alleviate or eliminate that piece of things. Um, you also know that you're working with somebody who is working directly with me. That does give me a little more control over the transaction and help ensure that it's going in the right direction. So hang on just one mm -hmm. second. I'm gonna time sure. you out because we kind of do this progressively. Thanks for volunteering and these are all advantages. However, in the style in which we do this, we do question-based. So would this not be stronger if you were asking questions instead of giving me a laundry list? Sure, okay. So what, would but, be yeah, a great, yeah. what would be a great question to start with? Okay, so I would take what I say and flip it to questions. I would say, okay, Denny, how do you feel about leaving your home at nine o'clock in the morning and not getting to return until nine, 10 o'clock at night? 
Okay, go back to a more basic question. Anyone, what, okay. would, be, what would be a very good place to start? It's like the server walking up as you just sat down at a restaurant. What's most important to you in this transaction? Or that, yes, now you're on the right track. Wouldn't a great question always be, do you, do you mind if we have a conversation about the pros and cons? Sure. All right, so let me ask you, can you see any advantages? So I'm asking them, what would be the advantages to you to have this buyer buy it now instead of go through the whole process? Now, that's the, that's the idea I'm attempting to impart here is, they're gonna then maybe give you some things that are important to them versus us giving them six or seven things. And maybe by the time you get down to the fifth, fifth thing that's important to them, they've already tuned us out. Okay. Now we'll have to help them because we know more of the advantages and disadvantages. Mm -hmm. However, that's the only point I wanted to make. Does that make sense? Yes, thank you. And that's welcome. a great way of putting it, Denny, asking them, well, what are the advantages of that? Yeah. What will you find? You'll find out what their hot buttons are, and you might actually look, find out that their perception is not really what's going to happen. Yeah, and they may say, "Well, I don't know. Let me know." Then, then you can go ahead, and then when you then you would ask <clears throat> just what uh, just what Shannon was doing. How do you feel about getting up at nine on Tuesday and not coming back for thirteen days because we had showings for thirteen days, right? John, there's one thing that I want to show you guys before I have to buzz out of here because this goes back to the role play we had today. And I've never, I've never made this slide before. So y'all, if you're playing Candy Crush, just stop for a second. I want to show you, and this is one, one of the reasons I made this slide is James Shaw has heard that the number one objection that uh, agents are getting all across the country from sellers is, hey, look, I know it's easy to sell. It's hard to, hard to buy. So we know about the homeless seller. So it, we know about the homeless seller. That's the objection. We know about our model. Acknowledge, isolate, address, and close. Let me show you the new slide. Here it comes. Get your, get your eyeballs ready. In my opinion, this is a process for dealing with a homeless seller. You guys can practice it after I uh, buzz off, and I'll be back so, as soon as I can. Number one is <clears throat> isolate. Now, I know that's part of the model, so I'm, I'm not being repetitive. I'm just making the point it, here that if the seller says, look, I'm, I don't want to buy, and let, I don't want to sell unless I find a place to buy, take any objection. You can handle it till the cows come home. And if you're attempting to handle that objection, yet there's another objection behind that one or a couple behind that one, do you think your conversation will be effective? No. It's like talking to someone who doesn't have the authority to sign this the listing papers. Kind of waste of time. So make sure that that is the, the main thing. Number two is find out if they're a buyer or seller. And this is exactly how it handled all the time. Don't talk. Find out if they're a buyer or seller. This is just a simple question. What's the question, John? Well, one of them is, do you need to sell your home in order to buy? Yeah, basically, that's it. Can you buy? I, I ask it. I ask it another way. I ask it. Do you, Can you buy? Can you, can you buy your next home without selling this one? That seems a little bit more positive to me uh, other than need to. So if they answer yes, that's a conversation one way. If they answer no, that's a conversation another way. However, it's important to find out. Next, help them, help them going back to the question. Okay, let's, let's just assume I'm going to pop on and um, I'm going to go we have her. So, Whitney. Morning. Just real quick. Yeah. Well, no, it's afternoon. Afternoon here. in your land. Yeah, it's almost <laughs> happy hour. So, uh, so, so I'm going to ask you. Do you need to? You, can Can you buy your next home without selling this one? Uh, I can. No, you can't. No, I can't. Okay, that's better. Because <laughs> that's going to be most people. So then, here's the next question. Okay, then. All right. So. We know they want to buy another home. They've got this one. What's your plan, Whit? 
oh, well, you know, I uh, hear it's a great time to sell my house. I'm just curious, like, where am I going to go? Because I'm not seeing many homes on the market. What I'm looking for isn't rare. It's just a three bed, two bath, at least 1500 square feet. So yeah, I need to sell before I can buy. Well, forgive me for being ambiguous for the question. What I meant was, what's your plan to get from this house to the next house? Oh, that's why I'm hiring you. Okay. Do you have any ideas? Have they heard? I mean, how, how are you going to do it? What's your, in your mind, how are you going to do it? Um, well, I'd like to identify my property before I list, but I'm not sure if that's the best way. Now, the reason I'm taking a, a few seconds, I am helping them. I'm helping them acknowledge that Houston, I've got a problem. And they might have some ideas. They might give you some ideas. They say, that's why I'm hiring you. All right, this, it's groovy. Rather than going, don't solve a problem, they don't acknowledge that they have yet. All right, next. There's only five steps. Make sure that where they want to go next is they, it, it, that's something they can afford. Not only afford, how often does that property come on the market? So what you want to go, you want to look, look at this one neighborhood. Yes. Do you see houses occasionally that you like, that you would love to own? Oh, yeah. And if you had the equity of your home, you would, you would love to hop on those homes? Absolutely. And do they sell fast? Yes. Uh, I get it. And how often do you see a home that might be good for your family? Um, well, they come on every couple of weeks, but then they're gone by the weekend. So you, we've just learned a very important piece of uh, information there. Does anybody know what it is? Things are moving fast. <laughs> They know that, although the that's time a, frame. Time frame what? Of uh, how how long it might take you as a real estate agent to find the other property. Well, it won't be me finding it. It's just that how often do they come on the market? Because what we have to do is find a buyer willing them to give them the length of time they need, rather than not just saying, "Well, what if we could find a buyer?" They'll let you stay in there thirty, sixty, ninety, one hundred and eighty days. Let them tell you. Once they tell you that, that they're seeing every couple of weeks, now the, the shorter the time frame, the better, the easier it is to find a buyer that give them post-closing possession. And then you end it with, well, what if there was a way, Whitney, that we could get you your equity now and you could stay in there two weeks, four weeks, so you, until another great. house pops on the market. See, that's, that is a step. And I know, I know you know the answer. Although I think you need to prepare them for the answer. I think it's just more effective. Anyway, that's my two cents. That's my slide. What do you think? I'm happy with it. Please put it on the refrigerator. So, John, I'm going to have to buzz out here. You're the host. I'll be popping back on. And if you guys want to do that or anything else, Sephron had another one uh, as well. I didn't have time to go over it. So I uh, appreciate you being on. I'll be back in just a few minutes, guys. Johnny there? John? Yes, I'm here. Okay. Sorry. I'm colorblind. I can't tell whether I have a red and green on my mic telling me whether it's on or not. I got no idea what color it is. <laughs> All right. So, Shifra, what was the other objection that you had that you sent over to Denny? And there you go. Yeah, that was um, dealing with buyers. Um, who are not finding their house. And the sit, I'm gonna have a conversation with them sitting down and preparing for expectation, lowering the expectations. Mm -hmm. um, and then I'm just in, I don't know if there's a, like a, object, a need for objections, but just dealing with the buyers who are leaving to go to for sale by owners. Okay. And, Interesting. Uh, who else has had that? come across their desk buyers are leaving towards for sale by owners or, or and, other agents who have off market okay other agents who have off market which is a, a pet peeve we won't get into that one um it's interesting and i don't know how many of you guys have seen this statistic that and this might help shipper with some of this is there are less for sale by owners now than there has been in 20 years as a percentage of the business. Why do you think that is? 
because they finally acknowledge what we do and how we can get them more money. Hey. <laughs> is, it, is it easy wait, waiting through 10 contracts and really deciding which one is the best? Uh, is it Medalis? Did I pronounce that correctly? My bellies, yes. <laughs> That's pretty <laughs> close. You're sitting, you're better than, better than Denny. So, <laughs> um, so what have you seen with Well, I, I think you, you said it you said it perfectly. It's the the fact that because of the way that I so I'm in, in Houston right now and um, I came from the Reno market and <clears throat> that was a battlefield just because of, of no, literally no, no inventory. Okay. So, but here in Houston, the things are a little bit different. We still have a lower inventory, but not nothing within two weeks. We at least still have a month and a half, two months. Okay. Uh, but I, I have not been able to find a lot of uh, for sale by owners um, because- There aren't a lot. Exactly, exactly. And I, I think a, a huge, just like you said, it's um, due to the fact that, that they're receiving a lot of interest and they don't know how to navigate that. Okay. So they, they do seek um, at that point, at least right now, how the market is, that guidance. Right. So let, let's cover both of these. We've got Shifra, who I don't know if I'm pointing the right way on my screen. It's not this way. Anyway, so with Shifra, with the buyers that need some redirection on expectations. Let's cover that first, and then we'll go into sellers and the ability to sell on their own. All right. <clears throat> so Shifra, the buyers that you're having this challenge with, are they currently renting? Yes. Oh, there are a few, so yes. The, the, <laughs> the one I'm going to speak to tomorrow is renting. Yeah. All right. Awesome. So Shifra, I'd like you to be the agent on that. All right, we're gonna we're gonna get you some real practice here. Okay. I need a buyer that is currently renting, that is concerned about the market, and they can't get what they want in their price range. Who would like to be that buyer? Thanks, Al. Appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, John. <laughs> All right, Al. Give her, give her the objection. Let's let's roll through this. Uh, yeah, I'm looking for a three bedroom, two bath. Uh, home. I'm currently renting. Uh, my lease is up in two months and um, I'm trying to find something in this area so my kids can stay in the same school. And this is my price range and i uh, like to be able to work with uh, FHA loan. Awesome. So I, I hear your criteria of what you're looking for in a home and we've been, I understand we've been working together now for a few months. Um, let's recap on what we've seen. Were there homes I showed you that caught your interest? Well, yeah, there's definitely been homes out there that have caught the interest. Uh, the issue is, is they're going for much over the asking price and we just don't have the funds to compete in the market. But, and looking back, most of those homes that went for at least $10,000 or more over asking price. And some of them that we've looked at don't even accept FHA uh, loans. I hear, and those are important concerns. Um, so if you recall, I in invite you to look at that listing price as a starting point, if you remember. That's the starting price. In other words, where the price can go to can be significantly higher. So would it be helpful for us to view homes that are at least 50,000 less than the listing price? If they were out there, I'd be interested, but they're not out there. And what would happen, Al, if the homes that are meeting the, the, the digits that you are comfortable with um, had less of your must-haves. Remember your must-have list that meet all the check boxes. Would you be willing to adjust? To bath is pretty basic, I think, uh, uh, with a small yard. Um, 
I don't think that in a, in a, in a garage, I don't think that's, uh, that's asking for too much. So in other words, would you be willing to adjust your criteria or the price point? Well, it's all, it's all based on what we qualify for and the funds we had to work with. So what, what will you do? What will you and your family do if this market is offering you homes that are beyond your budget? Uh, we're looking at you for a solution. Yes, I, 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 I look forward to um, helping both of us have clarity on how oh, to move You're forward. so close. You're so close. Boop <laughs> in, John. So, Shifra, can I, can I jump in here for a moment? Please, okay. yes. <clears throat> the, the big challenge, and we hear this all the time, what's the greater pain? All right. So, Al, what are you paying for rent right now? Uh, right now, we're paying eighteen hundred dollars a month. Okay, wonderful. So, as a buyer, I know we've been looking for three or four months. We missed out on a couple houses. Do you think that those houses are now worth more or worth less than we could have bought them for three or four months ago? Oh, they're worth more. Mm. Do you think the market's working for you or against you Definitely as a buyer? Okay, I'm going to back out for a second. You guys see what we did here? We're painting them into a corner. He's just told me his rent, just told me that the house that he liked is worth more than he was paying for it, and the market's working against him. So, Al, we're sitting down and having this conversation next year. How much will you, would you have spent in rent? Well, they're going, they're going to raise, we've already been notified, they're going to raise our rent $300 a month, so... Okay, so you're going to spend $25,000 in rent? Yeah. Okay, how much of that will you get back when you move out? Zero. Hmm. Doesn't it make more sense to put that money in your pocket with the house that you own? Uh, that's, that's the plan. I agree with you. So in a market like this, would you rather lose that $25,000 or maybe look at something that is slightly different criteria that you can build out or design or change in such a way that it will meet everything you need. Well, yeah, like I said, we're looking for good options. So what are you? So now we've got them. We, at this point, we just pivoted them. Um, and he's able to start picturing something that's not in his current wheelhouse, stepping back a bit and allow him to reconsider his, his position and now look at something, well, you know what, maybe I can look at something else. And that's where, Schiffer, that's where you'll step in. You say, you know what, we've got one down here. The other thing, the other line, and I love this when Denny uses this, <clears throat> is, you know, Al, you know why all these houses are going for over ask? Yeah, we have a shortage of inventory here. Well, so what do you think about the houses that have been on the market for two or three months? There's very few. There are you some. Already pulled, you already pulled up all in Maricopa County. There's only like 1,200 homes that have been on the market for 30 days or better. There are houses that are on too long. So if a house in this market is on too long, why do you think that is? Well... Could be a number of things. Could be uh, they're overpriced. Could be the condition. Uh, okay, so overpriced condition. So doesn't it all come down to price? If the condition isn't good, it's probably priced too high for its condition, right? That's true. But if the condition is not good, it's going to take money to fix it up to live in it or to pass FHA for the loan. It, it might. It might. And it might not. You just don't know until you move forward. Now, you could be one of those people that can, in this market, can say to your friends, yeah, I got something under list price. How does that make you feel? I think you yeah, can find, it. find it. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. 
And then the other thing, guys, is what does asking price really mean? Come on, somebody unmute and talk. <laughs> starting price, starting price. <clears throat> yeah, is that what a seller is going to accept in any market? It's a buyer's market. They put the house on the market for 500000 Is Is that what they're going to accept? No, it's going to be. Well, like most likely they're going to negotiate it down a bit. Yeah. If you put the house on, a mar on the market for $1,000, do you really expect to be able to buy it for $1,000? It all, all the asking price is, is, Hey, I'm selling and I just want to get your attention. This all only purpose of an asking price. So yeah, you might consider putting that into your conversations with your buyers in the initial consultation in any market. It's just a flag. What I found John, uh, where people are using FHA because of the amount of uh, money they have to work with and to get out of these pricing wars is direct them into areas further out with new builds. Mm -hmm. Again, adjusting expectations. Yeah. And sometimes you'll have an FHA buyer who has plenty of cash, may have had a challenge in the past, and they can't get a conventional loan. Uh, Diana McLean's got one of those closing in a couple weeks. So. Woo woo. Woohoo. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'm going to totally butcher her name again. Madeline? Pretty close. It's getting better. <laughs> my daddy. <laughs> it's like a, like a um, Florida lease, my daddy. Okay. My daddy. Mm -hmm. My Okay, great. Thank you. <clears throat> I will get it one of these times on the first try. All right. That's all right. So sellers, let's go to your seller objection, your seller issue. Actually, um, I'm curious to know what, what everybody thinks is if it would be more beneficial um, because I do have um, a question about how do you overcome a objection where you're trying to get into the luxury market, but my history of sales have been on the lower end. They haven't been on the luxury market yet. And the specific neighborhood that I'm marketing to um, already have their established real estate agents that actually live there. So how would you overcome a listing presentation where you're showing up and, and you're trying to, you know, break into it? Have you, have any of you guys had that? This, this is, who's had that before? issue? Now I know Whitney only sells really expensive homes in San Diego. Um, <laughs> you know, you, you, you look, you look at how she keeps her house in the background there. You'll know that, that she's, <laughs> so who has ever gone on a listing presentation and you're concerned because of exactly that, you know, there's a neighborhood expert. This is a price point I've never been in. Shannon, you're nodding your head. Yeah. I, I, mean, I will was... just, sorry. Go ahead. Dee Dee first and then Shannon. Okay. I just will like have a lot of confidence with my team. Even if I don't have the experience, I always talk about my team and the experience that they have. And I am pretty confident with that. So when I am talking about somebody about sales, I am talking about the sales that my team have and, and had you, you in, the, have... in the last 35 years. You, you, you do got a pretty good guy in Denny running your team. So uh, that's, <laughs> that, that's a good crutch that, uh, <laughs> I wish everybody would have that, that option to be able to have. So, uh, and yes, Didi, you do play that card very well. Shannon. I can't say it wasn't in a price point that I am not used to, but I know I have not too long ago walked into a listing appointment and I just screwed myself right out of it because I went in there, there's a neighborhood expert, sorry, <laughs> good. And, and, and I just kind of, you know, I guess in my hindsight, I should have just pushed this other name right out of my head because I kept catching myself as I was sitting there in front of these people trying to help them thinking about, oh, I just know they're going to end up listing this with so-and-so because she just lives right down the street and she sells the heck out of this neighborhood. Um, so you got in your own way on that one. I absolutely 120% did. Yes. Anyone else done that before? 
preconceived notion. Yeah, I'm just I'm just here going through the motions. Yeah. Okay. Hey, so don't do that. Kim, perfect. I'm glad you unmuted because I was going to call on you. <laughs> Hi, everyone. I'm actually out of Dallas, but I did join the Naples office. We're moving out there in um, June when the house is done. Wonderful. But I, well, welcome to Naples. Thank you. So one of my very first listings was a home. My very first home was 749. And it was in a neighborhood that I lived in. And I found, because when I seen a neighborhood specialist, I found that a lot of people, even though she was, may not want to work with her. Mm -hmm. And when they see how much you care, you know, because sometimes people, when they're it, in the business. Can back, back that up. When they see how much you what? When they see how much you care about Thank them. You. And it's not just about the sale. Because sometimes when they're neighborhood experts, they're so busy that they're just taking and thinking of the dollar. Who do people do business with? People that they like. No like and trust. Right. Okay. So what's the best way for someone to like you and say, oh my God, Kim is a genius. What's the well, best way? A couple of things that I did for that neighborhood was because I live there. So you could also uh, join some of their uh, community events that they have and help out. And when they get to know you and see you, they like you. And you could so, also. So Kim, that's that's good. But let's your first time in there. OK, your first time in this neighborhood. You And you know, you're going up. And I'll, this is a personal example on my part. I just listed and sold a home. The guy right next door is the neighborhood expert, and he's a former, he's a retired major league baseball pitcher. So to say I was going up a professional, yeah, you know what? He was a professional, uh, much higher than I ever got in baseball. And guess what? Got the listing. And you know what my listing presentation was? What's that? I didn't bring anything with me. Why? To bring your personality. People do business with those that they know, like, and trust. Right. So how do you gain that trust and, frankly, the admiration of the client? Ask questions. Find out about them. Yeah. Not only about their goals. Ask them about their kids, their pets, their vacations. You're going to leave there. They're going to say, oh, my God, Kim's the smartest real estate agent I've ever, ever met. And you said like four sentences. Yeah. Okay. And when you go so, out in the neighborhood and if you're farming a neighborhood, and that's what I had done, uh, people get to know you and like you. Mm -hmm. And if you have pets, they get to know your family. And then they they trust you and they, they'll ask you questions about the market. And then uh, if you feel a little insecure about it, shadow a top agent for, you know, one time, and then you'll get the knowledge because it's the same, it's the same pitch. What mm -hmm. I find it's easier to sell luxury. And sometimes like a lot of people get intimidated, they're like, oh, they're luxury, they're luxury, but they seem easier to work with than some of the people that are like 200,000. I can assure you, you are correct on that. So Madeli, does that, does that help? I'm curious now, in, in what way are you saying they're easier, Kim? Well, I just don't feel them to be as needy. They feel like they trust you. Maybe they feel like they've been down this road before, so they're, mm -hmm. they're used to the pattern of what takes place. I think there's more questions that are asked uh, for somebody who's maybe a first time home, which is fine. They're, that's fine. Uh, and, you know, uh, somebody who's unsure of, you know, just stepping up. But Typically, I've found in the higher market, they just seem more easygoing and relaxed. It's us that get nervous because we think, you know, it's no different than you being in front of a superstar. And you're like, oh, my God. Wow. You know, they put but, their pants on the same way. And guess what? Yes, They're a little yeah. easier to deal with because they've done it more often. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so just wanna... maybe get that drunk monkey off your shoulder exactly. about the expert <laughs> being in the neighborhood because sometimes they may not like that expert. True. Exactly. True. Thank you, guys. That's all right. That's so very we're helpful. Gonna, we're going to go into the last one, which is the one that Madeline brought up, which is the dreaded for sale by owner. Why do I have to list with you? Anybody can sell a house in this market. I'm just going to put it on Facebook Marketplace and on Zillow, and it'll be sold tomorrow. Who's had that? 
Well, I if you, if you if you're not raising your hand, you're not going on enough <laughs> listing appointments. <laughs> I haven't really worked with for sale by owners, but I guess some of the questions you can ask them is how is anybody going to see your list and other than a drive by or just Zillow. you're only touching a certain amount of people, whereas we're putting it on MLS, we're talking to other agents. Yeah, they're going to see it on Zillow. Right. So everyone's going to see it. So, so I, I Maya, actually, go ahead. Um, yes, I'm so glad you didn't call me Mia or Maya. Maya. I, I yes. have a daughter, Mia, so I knew it wasn't Mia. <laughs> yes. Um, so I actually did, uh, most of my listings are for sale by owners. Um, and one of, that's right, that's one of the biggest objections. And I just go, okay, so actually you're right. You can sell your property in this market. I'm pretty sure it's going to sell if you leave it as a for sale by owner. The question I want to ask you is, do you want to sell it at the price you have advertised it now? Or do you want to actually create demand for your property and increase that bottom line. What's more important to you? Love that. Are you looking to save money or make money? Absolutely. Wonderful. Let's, let's play through that. Okay. Okay. Let's, let's play through that. Um, Ryan, you want to be yeah. a seller? You've got enough experience where I know you can be a kind of a hard seller on this one. Okay, let's do oh, it. Oh, boy. Awesome. What did I do? <laughs> oh, listen, I wasn't going to call on you, Maya, but since you you just volunteered yourself. Uh -oh. <laughs> All right, Maya, come on. I literally. You do a lot okay, of for sale go, by owners, go. so this is, this is going to be pro against pro. Okay, we'll see. All right, Ryan. Um, ring, ring. Oh, are we on the phone? Perfect. Hello. Hi, Ryan. This is Maya with Keller Williams Atlanta Perimeter. I actually saw you had one, two, three Main Street for sale. Yeah. You want to come buy it? Oh, absolutely. I would love to tour that property. So how many offers have you received so far? Oh, so you're a buyer. You're not an agent? I am an agent. I am with Keller Williams, Atlanta Perimeter. Uh, oh. And I do work with a lot of buyers that want to move into a property like yours. So I just wanted to preview it before I share it with any more buyers. Yeah, no, you, you can definitely, I mean, if you have a buyer, bring your buyer by. We, we definitely, you know, I'll work with the buyer. But, you know, I, I, I have a million agents calling me right now. Um, so unless you have a buyer. <laughs> am I looking number 100? <laughs> yeah, unless you have a buyer, I'm, I'm not really uh, interested. Okay, all right. So you say you have a lot of um, agent calling you. So um, I can make that stop, by the way, you know. Perfect. <laughs> I can make the call stop. <laughs> yes. So let me tell you something. Let me ask you a couple of questions. Where are you moving when you sell? Uh, we're going to move uh, to Tennessee. It's an it's absolutely beautiful place, Knoxville. Awesome. Did you already buy your house there? Uh, no, not yet. I mean, we, we, you know, we're trying to get this going and, and uh, we're looking though. Oh, okay. You keep saying we, who else is moving with you? Oh, so I, I have 12 kids. No, uh, my wife and, 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 and my, uh, I actually have five kids, which everyone thinks is a lot. So my wife and five kids. <laughs> oh, that is wonderful. That is wonderful. Oh my goodness, that's a big move right there. So we need to make sure that you have the most money in your pocket when you make the big move, right? No, absolutely. That's what I'm doing for sale by owner. I want to say, I, I mean, I'm just being honest. I don't want to, I don't want to pay you a commission and, and, and I don't see the reason why I, I should have to if in this market, I could just sell it myself. So you, I guess like, because you want to save the commission, you already have a number in your mind as far as what will make you happy, right? Absolutely. Okay, do you mind uh, sharing that number with me? Because I think I can beat it. Well, I have it listed for 850 and you know, if you bring me an offer at 850, that'd be great. You will pay the three person buyer's commission? Um, I'll pay the, the buyer uh, 2%. Two person. So I'll do the math real quick while we talk here, but uh, it looks like you are going to net somewhere around uh, 815, 810. So here's what I'm going to say. What if I could show you a way to make even more than that? 
after you pay all the commission to me. Is that something you'll be interested in? It's about making the money and moving to Tennessee so you can buy the next home. Sure. All righty. When are you available? Thursday afternoon or Saturday morning? Let's, let me show you my plan. And if you not like it, don't worry. I'll host a free open house for you. Maybe we'll get you a buyer that way. Well, are you going to bring a buyer? <laughs> I plan on bringing many buyers so they can bid on each other. That's what I okay, plan on doing. Okay, you, you can come so, by then. If you have a buyer, you can come by. Any afternoon works for me. I get home by 5. I'll... Perfect. I'll be there tomorrow at 5.30. Sounds good? Sounds great. Thank you. All right, Maya. Good job. You got the appointment. Let me ask you, what do you feel you did well? She did a lot of things well. <clears throat> she did. Uh, some things and some things I want to change. Um, yes. Let, let, let's I, hit the good stuff like a, first. All right. So asking the questions and not letting him and kind of like making him loosen a little bit. Um, that was one thing that I tried to be better at. Can I give you one question that you should have asked that you're so, I mean, you were so yes. perfect, but there's one question that, and we do with a lot of first sale by owners. Yes. So it sounds like to me that money's important to you. Is that correct? Correct. So if I could make you the amount that you want and you walk away from the whole thing with 850,000 in your pocket, then what does my commission matter? Ah, uh, that's a good one. Right? That's a very good one. Okay. Yeah. Why do for sale by owners sell for sale by owner? Sounds like to me money's important to you. Is that correct? Yep. That leads them right into the next line. Ryan, that is a great question. Write that one down. And it's a question. I am. You didn't tell her to question. And nobody's going to be like, oh, no, money's not important to me. I, I don't. <laughs> okay, so if I could show you, if I could get you the number that you want, and you walk away from that 850000 from the whole deal, then what does my commission matter? You got what you wanted, I got what I wanted. And you got your time back, nice. Ryan. You got your time back and all the things, and we'll <laughs> just go right into it, you know? Um, because of the program which we run and, and all the things we do, I, you know, what we're going to more than make up for the, you know, any any commission that's mine, I will make up for it above your price. So what price do you want to sell that? What price do you want to put in your pocket? Not what price do you want to sell that? What price do you want to put in your pocket? Mm. Nice. Excellent. All right. We do have one more request, and that is from Whitney in San Diego. All right. What, what do you got? Hey, um, so I was actually door knocking yesterday and met a bunch of future sellers. And one guy um, came like running out of the house and he's like, Whitney, come back. And basically he's like, hey, I think I might want to sell my house. He's like, but I'm just curious. So I was door knocking, basically dropping off a flyer like, hey, we just sold a property in your neighborhood for 200000 over the ask price, which is ridiculous. And so in his mind, I think that's why he ran out of his house. Like I want 200,000 over that price. Um, but then his concern is, so when I buy, will I be paying 200,000 more than whatever? And obviously we don't know what that number is. I don't even know what his property is, but I have to call him today. And I was just curious, what do you say in those situations when it's like ridiculous? Like, okay, you know, on your end, you're going to get 200,000 more than the list price. However, we're going to list it different now that we know <laughs> what the market will do. But uh, moving so there's forward, easy way to handle it, there's a really easy way to handle it. I want to hear what some of the responses here. So Cody, you walk into a place and he says, "I want you to list this because you just got a whole bunch more money than anyone ever did. Yet, how is that going to affect my purchase? Am I going to have to pay that much? More? Can you hear me? Yes, I can." All right, can you repeat that one more time? Now, granted, I've been with Keller Williams for three days, so we're gonna we're gonna shoot from the hip oh, here. This is awesome, Cody. I appreciate you unmuting yourself. Step hey, let's do up. it, man. Hey, All that's right. what I'm here for. So you go into a listing appointment because you just sold a house three doors down. That should be a band name. Uh, you just sold a house three doors down for two hundred thousand dollars more than the last sale in that neighborhood. A can if you if you do that for me, am I going to have to pay 
$200,000 more for my next house. And the reason why is the price points are similar. So okay. for instance, this property listed at a million sold for 1.2. Now he's going, okay, well, my 1.2 house might go for 1.4. Okay. Okay. So what I'm saying to the potential seller, he's wanting to know where he's going to go, right? Oh, he's, he's wanting to know if he's going to end up having to pay more. If he's going to have to pay more, well, it depends on what neighborhood he wants to move to, uh, what type of house he's looking for. Uh, if is he downsizing? Is he does he have kids that just moved out of the house? Is he looking in, to? In this case, he's he's spending about twenty percent more. He's spending twenty percent more. Maybe I'm not following uh, right. the question. I know so, we're, we're running short on time, yeah. so I'm going to go to if you don't mind, Cody. Pick a veteran, else. so I can. Yeah, Listen, it was awesome <laughs> that you stepped up. Absolutely. Who wants to jump on this one? All right, let me let me try this. All right, so what, let me ask you. I know that you're concerned if we sell your house for more money, that that's going to cause a problem on the other end, because you might have to spend more. Is that what I'm understanding? Yeah. Okay. So in, in our example, you know, the house was listed for a million and it sold for a million two, and you're concerned that a house for a million two is going to sell for a million four. You were spending $200,000, if my math is correct, you were spending $200,000 more for the next house. Is that right? Well, it's, I think I might need to because I'm trying to just get one more bedroom. Well, you know, the, yours is a, your neighborhood's a million and the neighborhood that you wanted to go to was a million too. That's a $200,000 difference, right? Yes. Okay, so now if your house sells for a million too and then you have to pay a million four, what's the difference? Another bedroom. Yeah, but what's the what's the difference in price? Two hundred thousand million four. It's two hundred thousand. Yeah. So is it really costing you anything if you have to pay two hundred thousand dollars more? No. <laughs> well, that <Okay>. was easy. <laughs> it's it it's not that hard. Now the other thing, guys, you remember you you're never going to capitalize at the peak of a seller's market and a buyer's market on the same day. It's never gonna happen, okay? However, another tactic you can use on this is, you know, when you bought the house, how much did you put down? Great, $50,000, whatever the number is, because he bought it 15 years ago. <clears throat> how much equity do you have now? Great, so when you buy a new home, you're only putting your original $50,000 into it. The rest is house money. What do you guys think of that? Tell me what you mean by house money, because this one might have a uh, slight language barrier on this call. Well, uh, you, you know, you've been to a <laughs> casino, right? You yeah. go in the casino, you, you put a hundred bucks on red seven, you hit it your first time, you walk away with three grand, and then you find yourself playing with that three grand the rest of the night. You didn't walk in there with it. And it's the same thing now. It, it, it comes to getting sellers and buyers in the mindset that we're just shifting an asset from one address to another address. Does that make sense? And if you bought the house that you're in and you only had to put $50,000 down or $10,000 down or $400,000 down, it doesn't matter what the number is, you're shifting that, that original investment from one asset to another asset. And if you got more on the table when you left, great. That's helping you dissuade the cost of the new one. People get hung up on price all the time. How many of you guys are working with buyers that are, uh, go for it, Kim, nice seeing you. How many of you guys are working with buyers that are financing? Yeah, most of us, right? What do they buy? Do they buy price or do they buy payment? Come on, somebody payment. come off mute and say it. Payment. Payment. Does the price matter if it's in their payment budget? No. no. Interest rates. What's happening with interest rates? 
they're increasing. Yeah. And what normally happens when interest rates go up? Prices go down. Normally. Mm -hmm. What's happening today? Prices they're staying up. the same or going up. Yeah, they're staying the same or going up. So the cost of ownership for your buyers that are financing is going up every single day. So this is the reason, these are the conversations to just gently remind them to keep them energized because after you've lost 10 or 15 homes, you can feel kind of beat up and downtrodden, both as an agent and as a buyer. Mm -hmm. Make sense? Anyone have yeah. anything else before we, uh, we head off for the day? It's 201 and I don't want to keep you guys any longer than you want to be here. Thank you. All right, guys. It was a pleasure. Thank you. Guys. We will uh, see you in two weeks because I'm on vacation next week. So you got Denny Solo again next week. See you guys later. Thank you. Thank you, Thank guys. You. Bye.